evening and welcome to tonight's regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Education. Um, I'd like to have everyone join me in the Pledge of Allegiance as we start our activities. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. And at this stage, we'll uh, Secretary, call the roll, please. Gladly. Uh, President Wasserman. Here. Vice President Baker. Here. Secretary Kaminsky, I'm here. Treasurer Brandstamp. Here. Member Gordon. Babson. Member McFarland. Here. And Member Singer. Here. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank uh, you. And tonight I have the uh, honor and privilege of administering the oath of office to our newest board member, Pamela Singer, who goes by henceforth will be known as Pam, <laughs> she reminded me. Um, we welcome her and uh, she came with a list of credentials that was just too tempting to turn down. So we thank you for your service and you're willing to jump in with us. Thank you. And with that, uh, if you'll stand and raise your right hand, I would like to read you the oath of office. Can you zoom from there? <laughs> okay. I, Pamela Singer. I, Pamela Singer. Do solemnly swear do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of this state. And the Constitution of this state. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. The duties of the office of member of Board of Education. The duties of office of member of Board of Education. Of Midland Public Schools, Midland County, Michigan. Of Midland Public Schools, Midland County, Michigan. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Congratulations. Thank Welcome, you. Pam. Thank you. Again. Welcome. Okay, with that, we'll move into the consent agenda. Uh, everybody will see in the agenda in front of you, we have our regular meetings and special meeting minute notes where we uh, selected Pam to uh, serve the rest of the next year. Uh, also, some letter of agreements between the, our Midland City Education Association and us and a list of resignations uh, that have come in since that we need to approve, uh, some hires that we're gonna need to approve, and also the payment of some Troon law firm bills. Does anybody have anything they'd like to delete from the consent agenda and or add and or discuss? Seeing none, uh, I'll entertain a motion for the consent agenda items. I move we approve consent agenda item 3.1 through 3.5. We have a motion by Treasurer Branstad, support by Secretary Kavinsky. Any other discussion? Seeing none, we will vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. At this point, we move into our agenda where the public uh, is free to address the board. Uh, we have no written requests this evening, although anybody in the audience is free to come to spend five minutes with us. Uh, uh, if anybody here is so inclined to do so, come forward and state their name and school attendance area, please. Seeing none, we'll move on to Board of Education matters and presentations of the board, and I'll hand it over to Mr. Sherrill. And I'm gonna turn it right over to Mrs. Castle, who I think has got a group of students and, and a teacher here to do our presentation today. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Melissa DeBoer from Dow High School, and I have the pleasure of teaching marketing, merchandising, and sales at the point two and point three levels. Tonight, I am here to discuss with you our advanced sales management class. The advanced class is in charge of operating and running the day-to-day -day operations of our school store, the Charger Shop. We have brought with us some small tokens of our appreciation for everything you do for us and all the hard work. We also want to make sure that you feel part of the Charger family. Thank you. Thank you. Some of the unique things that happen at Dow High that show our Charger spirit. So, here's to you, Dow High, for another great opportunity for our Thank you. 
Commission ability. There is a direct correlation, obviously, between sales and communication, so I thought, what a great chance for the kids to learn some presentation skills and to learn some other skills that will help them become the leaders of tomorrow. The program that we're teaching is an eight-week program. Each student will give two individual speeches. The speeches must be between three and five minutes in length, as well as meet other certain requirements for the speech. At the end of each session, each speaker is evaluated by every single one of their peers and given feedback. The students will stand up to give that speaker what we like to call blows and grows. A blow <laughs> is something that they did really well, and a grow is something that they can improve on. When it's all said and done, at the very end of the hour, all students vote and they select a person of the evening. <laughs> that student is awarded our traveling trophy for the week with the name Bragging Rights. And <laughs> And then, in addition to the planned speeches, they are also given the opportunity to do some unplanned speeches, which we like to call table topics. Table topics are when students are called to the front of the room, they are given a deck of cards, they pick from the deck and they look at the topic. They have 30 seconds to prepare and then they need to speak on that topic for one to two minutes. This program teaches students not only organization and voice and gestures, vocabulary, quick thinking and confidence, but it also offers our students leadership roles, such as president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer for each hour. Well, I could go on and on and on about how wonderful this unique opportunity is for the sales management school that students at Dow High. I will instead introduce the four great students that I brought with me this evening. So for my third hour class, I brought with us president of Toastmasters, Drake Pendleton, and Vice President <laughs> Julie Croft. From fourth hour, I brought with me President Elena Donoso and Vice President Chris Anderson. Each of these students have different interests and skills that make them unique. Julie Croft will now discuss how Toastmasters will help her further her unique interests and skills. to the parents at the parent meetings about you know what we require from the girls on the team and what we expect and give an introduction and a welcome to the new members on the team. So being able to like do Toastmasters and to have the confidence to get in front of a lot of people and give a speech is something that a lot of people need practice with. Um, another thing that being or doing Toastmasters will help me with is <coughs> motivational speeches to help me plan and prepare something to present to a group of people. It also helps me with communication um, with other coaches and with other teammates. And if there's an issue on the team, it helps me um, with communication and working through those problems. And at the end of our season, we have a big banquet. And I'm responsible with the other captain on the team to talk a little bit about each person and give an overall summary of the season. And being able to get practice with preparing with Toastmasters is something that's going to help so much and just give me confidence to be able to get up there and do that well. And Toastmasters isn't only going to help me with my leadership role as captain on the tennis team, but also in the future with interviewing for jobs. That's kind of a nerve-wracking thing for a lot of people and doing Toastmasters helps you learn how to get up in front of people and speak professionally, which is something that's really important for job interviews. Um, it also helps with improvisation which, you know, if you're at a job interview and someone asks you a question, it helps you uh, think of an answer quickly and helps you get your mind moving for the interview. Once again, it provides a feeling of confidence while you're sitting there, you know, I can do this, I've done this before kind of a feeling. And it's practice. It's just really good practice to get up in front of um, even classmates or a larger group of people and give a quality speech. And you, as we go through high school, we do a lot of interviewing, and we also interview for colleges um, with admissions counselors and all kinds of things, and that is something that Drake is going to talk about. So 
coming up for all four of us as we're all seniors are college admissions, which is not exactly the most fun thing in the world, but uh, a lot of it is also going to involve interviews, uh, which as Julie said, is a huge and important part of every, every interview process, sorry, is being able to speak. And getting up in front of your, or getting up in front of a, either a board of people and being interviewed by them or sitting down one to one <coughs> and being able to confidently articulate what you want to say and being able to answer what they're questioning you on just on the fly is extremely important and helps getting to any college. Also, anytime in colleges, just like in high school, you're going to be doing a lot of presenting. And that isn't always the easiest thing for students. Uh, getting up in front of a large group of people. I know for me is extremely nerve wracking. Uh, being able to do Toastmasters in high school with Mrs. DeVore's class is extremely helpful. It helps you to learn how to calm down and handle yourself in front of a large group of people, how to get rid of that nervous energy and just get your point across without dragging on or losing yourself or losing your audience. During a lot of events in college, uh, you may have to go and work with a business oriented you're going to need to be able to work with professionals and whether it be at something like a dinner or a more uh, fundraising ball, you need to be able to speak well and just get your point where you need to be and make sure they understand what you're trying to say and that you are in fact prepared for what they're asking you. Another place where being able to speak extremely well <laughs> is uh, in our charger shop, in the school shop, uh, where I actually am an employee there. Uh, we work both students, parents, and teachers inside and outside of the school now. And being able to sell is obviously very important. I mean, that's what we're doing. And being able to talk to your customer is beyond helpful. Uh, we have recently started with the mobile charger shop. That was just installed this year, as far as I know. Uh, and what we're doing is we go to the games. We go to the varsity football games, and they set up and go through the stands and sell to parents that they've never met. When we're in the school, you're working with students that you know, you know, friends, friends' parents, teachers that you may have had, and you're a lot more comfortable. It's people that you've been around, you know how they're gonna react to things that you say, and you just get into a state of comfort. Whereas when you're out working at the games, it's people you've never met, parents who probably want to be watching the game rather than listening to you talk about your product. And being able to interact with them is extremely helpful. And by doing Toastmasters, you learn how to deal with it. Also, in our class, we learn how to deal with all of this. So also involved in the Charger Shop is Elena Hinoso, who is a manager in the Charger Shop. And she'll be coming up to talk now. Um, yes, apart from the Charger Shop, I was nominated last year to be the president of Habitat for Humanity and um, the secretary for the DECA Club. It is a business club which um, requires a lot of speaking abilities. And just as Julie said, having a leadership role and being able to talk to everyone in the club, being able to express your goal and what you actually want to accomplish is very extremely important. Not, all, not only with um, everyone else in, um, involved in the club, but also other leaders, the vice president and the secretary, the treasurer, being able to be, stay organized and have an effective team is very important and will only be able to do so with a good communication. Um, being able to talk also will also help us in um, the stress of the workload. Being able to just or organize yourself and know what exactly it is you need to accomplish is extremely necessary and being able to talk and to make effective campaigns on what, to, what you want to do is very, very, very important. Um, apart from the clubs which I'm involved in, which I know t I honestly, Toastmasters couldn't have come in any, in, in any better time, um, is I recently got accepted to the Young Entrepreneurs Academy at Northwood University. And every Tuesdays, we'll start having classes um, um, how to become an entrepreneur. And we are designing our own business plan. And in a few weeks from now, we will soon have an investor panel where we will have to present our product, present all the qualities, all our ideas, and be able to get all of those investors to actually agree with you. 
to actually know what you're doing and want to invest their money on your product. So being able to effectively speak and tell your ideas in a way that will convince them to give you money for a product that a teenager is doing is actually something that I need a lot of work on. <laughs> Honestly, um, talking a lot and I mean Toastmasters will really, really help me. I think that um, communication is the, the essential thing in life and it, I read in, um, in a newspaper a few weeks ago, real estate has the cliche location, 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 and for business leaders, it's communication, communication, communication. Very good. Um, I am creating now my business plan, but Chris has already created his own and actually has his own company. So, Otto, you know. <laughs> uh, yes, in October of 2012, I started my own business with one of my friends who's also a pilot. I guess I should introduce myself as a pilot for some reason. Um, what we did is we developed a mounting device, which you see right here, and it allows for up to three GoPro cameras to be attached to a Cessna airplane. And uh, last July, we actually took our company to the largest aviation convention in the world. This was held in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. It's a week-long event. And we were actually awarded a free booth here uh, in part of the Innovations Pavilion. So it was for new innovative t uh, technologies or businesses that were, uh, that were handed these booths for free so that they could display their product or ideas. And obviously being here, there are a lot of people since it is the world's largest. So I was very nervous, you know, it was a lot of pressure uh, to communicate with all these different people that I've never met before. I'm trying to sell this product, the idea. And so um, that was kind of like a crash course in sales for me. And what we're doing in our sales class right now, I can actually relate a lot to what happened there. You know, all these different objections that we're learning about and different ways to respond. I think to myself, yeah, I remember that happening over there. <laughs> and now Toastmasters is not only good for the business, it's also good for educators. For the past three years, I was uh, taught at an aviation camp held here in Midland at the Barstow Airport. And I, was, uh, I started this in my sophomore year, and it was really intimidating being in front of all these kids that were older than me and having to teach them something. You know, I was up here in front of them like, okay, I know this, I'm trying to teach this to you. It just, it didn't feel right. It felt like the roles were mixed and I was supposed to be the student down there and they were supposed to be teaching. And so that helped me to become really confident in standing in front of crowds and speaking. And so also because I am a pilot, my future, I do want to be a pilot, uh, corporate aviation actually. And this world is a very professional and very serious world. Not only the flying part of it, but also the business part. So in the airplane when I'm flying, I have to be able to, to communicate with air traffic controllers in a professional way. I have to know what I want to say, I have to say it precisely, and I have to say it in the short, short amount of time so that you know, everybody else can get their word in. <clears throat> and even after you land the airplane, you get on the ground, you're now, you're now uh, interacting with business executives. So it's very important that you can communicate that with them in a, a very professional way and you know, um, you know, be appropriate and everything like that with those executives. And now, like Mrs. DeBoer mentioned earlier, each week two, uh, two members from the classroom are awarded the trophy for <laughs> the best speech. And so uh, this week I was uh, honored to be awarded one of the trophies as well as Drake, who just spoke. Uh, Drake's up here, he's in the charger shop, he's one of the employees, so that's where we found him with his trophy. Right here, I uh, took my trophy, my traveling trophy for an airplane ride. <laughs> <laughs> and then also we have Afua and Trevor George, who are uh, two of our other winners from the other hours. So with that being said, members of the board, you please raise your glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Here's to you, Dow High, for allowing us another opportunity to become great communicators and leaders. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it and we were able to get so much out of it that they created some standards that they said to actually receive the certification that you have to meet the time requirements um, you have to show that you're prepared you have to make sure that you have everything in the speech that's required to be there 
The time requirement for the students is probably the toughest thing. Three to five minutes is a long time to talk, and you can't go over, you can't go under. You have to be right there. So just like in the business world when you're given so much time, the idea is that you take that time and no more or no less. If the students don't meet the criteria the first time, they can present the next time to the entire class the next day. Or if they are absent and they miss their speech, they don't do it the next week, they do it the next day in front of the entire class. The youth program is set up so that there's 15 to 20 people in each group. So we actually spl split the class in two, and I take one class and our volunteer, Tracy Mayette, takes another class. So we rotate back and forth between the two. Um, so the students have an opportunity to present in front of a smaller group, become much more confident, and then if they need to, they can present in front of a larger group if they don't meet the time requirement. I would just comment, I am impressed. What you're showing in October is just, it's amazing how well spoken all of you are, and, and you're going to go a long way, and I'm sure it will serve you very well. I would have loved to have had a program like this, rather than waiting till college and then you had to teach these classes. <laughs> right? It, it really has been a great opportunity, and no matter what level you're at when you come to Toastmasters, the goal is to take you to the next level. Mm -hmm. So last year I had students that literally could not stand up for more than 30 seconds at the beginning, and shaking. Sure. And then at the end, this is the same student that went out and told their friends, everybody should take this class because I am now confident and was getting up at the end, no note cards, no nothing, and giving a great speech. And that's what it's really about, just instilling that confidence so that they can take it with them later on. Any other questions? Yeah, I'll, I'll comment. Um, I, I really believe in, in the saying that, you know, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. And I think that in today's climate of uh, social media, it's so easy to hide behind a screen. And as somebody who used to interview and hire people, um, being able to communicate the way that the four of you came up here and, and articulated your different messages was really refreshing. Um, and it's going to carry very well for you moving forward, um, well above and beyond your peers who are not involved in the program that you are. So be proud of what you've accomplished so far and keep moving forward. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. We really appreciate it. Well, I've got to, I've got to come, oh, you don't get to run away so fast. And they don't get to run away so <laughs> fast. Um, Scott's comments are absolutely spot on. I used to do a lot of interviewing for Dow. Uh, I have to speak to banks, companies, city officials in my current role with my small company, and that pays off in spades. Um, so I think you're, you're definitely on the right track, uh, and convincing other, other classmates to do this is a wonderful thing. And Helena, congratulations on your Northwood program. And uh, how, does this, how is this different? I know how it's different. Let me rephrase that question. Talk to me about forensics versus this program. What do you get out of this that's differentiated from forensics? Come on up. Take that <laughs> we do our part of forensics. So I'll let Alina take that because she's actually part of the forensic team. So. Um, I actually did forensics in my old school in Japan. Um, it is sort of different because depending on what category you're in, um, I used to do duos or dramatic interpretation, which you already have your script done and you're already very much prepared. Whereas last year I did broadcasting and they give you um, a, a, whole, a, a whole bunch of articles and you need to prepare it in 10 minutes and give a speech in five, which is very, very similar to what we're doing right now. But um, I don't know. I think they're both very, very helpful. And um, for forensics, I mean, they already give you the speech sort of done. So you're, you need to be able to very fast and um, be able to put all the parts together and be able to just make the speech and talk. Whereas in Toastmasters, first of all, it's in, in front of your, all of your classmates. So I feel like that's a little more nerve wracking. And um, second of all, it's like we have the five minutes. Yeah, we have the topic, table topics, which is very like out of the blue, and we don't really know what we're talking about. So it's very <laughs> spontaneous. Thank you. And one last question. I noticed you had uh, Case Western Reserve's logo on there. I'm a proud alumnus. Is, are one of you planning to attend or looking to apply? Um, talk to our secretary on the way out. I'd like to have your email address. I can make a contact with you. Okay. I have just one more question. 
you obviously have real world experience with your corporation. Can the remaining three of you comment on, on your experiences outside of a classroom, if any, in applying what you've learned uh, so far? In other words, have you had any college interviews, job interviews, anything like that where this has really um, kind of been a turning point in your ability to articulate or to, to talk or convince anybody else to see your point or maybe hire you or admit you to Case Western? <laughs> So I'm also involved in the Boy Scouts in Troop 763 in Midland. And uh, <laughs> recently I've been working on my Eagle Scout project. And being able to sell the uh, committee that my project is worthy of what, I'm, what they want me to be doing, and that I'll be able to actually do it, and convincing the city that it's something that I should be able to do and that you know a 17-year-old kid can handle doing something like this and organizing all the people is really important, and being able to communicate that to a group of adults is really helpful and Toastmasters is helpful immensely for that. Excellent. Good for you. Very good. Any other questions? Great job. Hey, thank you. Thanks thank folks. You. Thank you. Don't forget to stop. <laughs> okay, we'll move on to the next item, Mike, is uh, Hanson Millage ballot language. If you want to hear something really dry that has to be read and written in public, you guys might want to stick around for this and give us some, some clues on how to do this. Well, we don't have to read it tonight, but it's there for your yes. information. So you have the motion that you're going to hopefully make at our next board meeting, as well as um, the ballot language that would be in front of the citizens as we go forward. Okay. And, and do you want to say anything more publicly about the timing, et cetera, of the millage and what it's for as sure. we go through this? Sure. Um, we had talked about um, different dates for the election. Um, February became the logical date um, for us for a couple reasons. One, we were not able to make the timeline in November. And then the February timeline uh, um, allows us to tack on to an already present election. And then if we weren't unsuccessful, well, we, would, or we were successful, we would have May to be able to come back to the voters one more time make our case why we should need this renewal and we have to continue to remind them it's a renewal of a present millage that allows us to keep our present funding going yep. forward. Yep, that's the main point, it's a renewal of where our current funding is that's locally based and next November would have been too late, would have created a funding gap, correct? Correct. The last, the last collection would be this summer, so yep. we, we would lose that funding during that period of time. Okay, thank you. Uh, moving on to curriculum and instruction, uh, we have a uh, Curriculum Committee meeting minutes now attended at Lynn. Yes, the Curriculum Instruction and Assessment, now called CIA Study Committee, met on Monday, September 30th at Northeast Middle School. And we talked about several different areas. We started with the accountability scorecards, and Bob Cooper shared with the committee members how the accountability scorecard is determined for each school. The accountability scorecard replaces the old Ed yes, letter grades that schools received in previous years. Colors are now being used in place of letter grades. Each building is assigned a color, with green being the highest, followed by lime, yellow, orange, and red the lowest. The color is determined by the percentage of possible points achieved on the scorecard based on progress, re on progress towards the goal of 85% in 2022 for all students in all subgroups in all subject areas along with various audit checks. Of the 11 schools in MPS, 10 received yellow and one received orange. Statewide, 2.8% were green, 0% were lime, 76.7% were yellow, 5.4% orange, and 15% red. Next, we talked about the top to bottom. Reading, released at the same time as the accountability scorecards, Bob Cooper also reviewed the annual top to bottom rankings for each building. Top to bottom rankings are determined by three factors at each school. 50% of the score is determined by the achievement level, 25% is determined by the improvement rate, and 25% is determined by the size of the achievement gap between the performance of top and bottom, 30% in each subject area. Midland Public Schools had five schools above the 90th percentile, two between the 80th and 90th percentile, two between the 70th and 80th percentile, 
one between the 60th and 50th percentile, and one between the 30th and 40th percentile. And next we discussed focus schools. This is the second year of the state determining and labeling schools as reward, focus, and priority schools. For the 2013-14 school year, Chestnut Hill Elementary School has been identified as a reward school for scoring in the top 5%. No Midland schools were named as priority schools. Carpenter, Carpenter Street Elementary, H.H. Dow High School, Midland High School, and Northeast <coughs> Middle Schools were, were determined to be focus schools. Focus schools are determined by having large achievement gaps between the performance level of their top and bottom 30% scoring students compared to the statewide achievement gap. The state has certain requirements that focus schools must follow. Jeff Jaster and Ben Cronkright shared various activities and strategies that their buildings were using to reduce their achievement gaps. Schools remain focus schools for four years, but they can have requirements suspended if they make enough progress in closing their achievement gap. Four of our 2012-13 focus schools, Chestnut Hill, Jefferson, Siebert, and Woodcrest were able to do that for the 2013-14 year. And lastly, the committee brainstormed possible topics and places to visit for future committee meetings. So it was a very good meeting. All these topics that we discussed Bob did a great job of sharing because it can get very confusing. Lots of statistics, lots of percentages, but um, bottom line, we're very proud of all of our schools and all their keep uh, working on to uh, accomplish great things and close any gaps that are there. And uh, and we'll and uh, we'll give updates in the future. Great. Any questions or comments to Lynn? See none, we'll move on to finance, and I think Angela has a committee report for us. I do. We met on October 1st. Um, the first thing we did was review the new format of the July and August financial reports. So they've changed some things, so um, we'll continue to refine the format. We made some suggestions and talked back and forth. The second thing we discussed was, according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, adult meals may not be subsidized with federal funds. Therefore, teachers and other staff members must be charged a higher price than students, even if the meal is exactly the same. Schools have the option of charging all a la carte prices or setting an adult unit price for the whole meal. Since we have the option of pricing adult lunches per building or district-wide, it makes sense to tie the pricing to quantity and use building-level pricing. So following the formula provided by the Michigan Department of Education, Office of School Support, School Nutrition Programs, our adult prices will be as followed. And we went through, um, since the student prices were just changed, these were updated. So it's $3 for an adult um, for the special of the day in elementary school, package lunch meals, four fifty-five. dollars elementary um, breakfast for an adult is $1.90, secondary lunch for an adult is four fifty-five. dollars and secondary breakfast for an adult is 205. Very um, complex formulas that the government has put in place for this. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> <laughs> um, a secondary breakfast is 205 for an adult. What is it versus a primary breakfast? Oh. <laughs> oh, oh. No, that oh, was the elementary. School. Sec secondary oh, school. Secondary yeah. Oh. And you're not there yet. Your kids are young. Right. I We're still in <laughs> elementary level. Yeah, you're still <laughs> elementary. <laughs> All right. Two, two more on. years. <laughs> <laughs> then we discussed some facility issues. The first thing is that MPS is currently soliciting bids from energy service providers to assist with the purchase of natural gas. We believe that we may be able to save tens of thousands of dollars by changing our purchasing methods. A recommendation will be made at an upcoming Board of Education meeting. Next, we discussed that the required monitoring equipment for the underground storage tanks is reaching the end of its useful life. The transportation and maintenance departments are exploring options for dealing with this. The next thing we discussed is that the custom designed aisle lighting in the ends of the seats in the central auditorium is beginning to fail. Since replacement is likely to be quite costly, our architect is going to recommend alternatives for consideration. And lastly, while checking buildings before the opening of school, Mrs. Klein took pictures of areas that are likely to require significant capital 
or maintenance expenditures in the near future. Mr. Sharo shared his perspective on the overall condition of our buildings and grounds, and we also got to see some of those pictures. Although precise data will not be available for another few weeks, preliminary estimates are that enrollment is less than the 7,919 that was budgeted. Administration is identifying cost-saving measures right now to pursue um, to avoid increasing the anticipated use of our fund balance for this school year. Our next meeting is November 5th. Thank you. Any questions or comments to Angela or the FFO? See none. We'll continue on the finance and I'll, t who am I turning it to? Mr. Cooper. To me, I think. <laughs> okay, Bob, thank you. So pinch hitting here for Linda. Uh, first, I have eight gift items just for informational purposes for you. Uh, you'll notice that uh, a couple are from H.H. Dow High School Music Parents, Walmart, uh, Woodcrest PTO. Uh, there's a couple for the debate program at Dow High from Alan and Jean Odd and also from the Gerstacker Foundation. Uh, there's one for cheerleading uniforms from the Athletic Booster Club. And there's one for some apps for iPads from the Chestnut Hill Elementary School administrative account. I, I would point out underneath that, still just for your information, but there is a donation. Linda wanted me to make sure I highlighted for you because it's kind of unusual. We don't often get 61 foot tall communication towers <laughs> uh, given to us, but, but we do have one here. And in fact, just uh, for some of the board members to remember, the amateur radio club worked with the um, girls in the weather balloon at Is, Central. Yep, yep. Okay. And track that if you remember that presentation. Yep. Yeah. And they've been working for over 18 months, I think it is, to uh, start a amateur radio club at Midland High School. And of course, with the move from Central to Midland High, they've been they need the tower to, to do their radio traffic. So they've been working that time. Uh, Mr. Bassett at Midland High School is the uh, faculty advisor. I thought it was very interesting that. Um, they not only are sponsoring the club, but they also went out and solicited the money they needed for uh, the tower itself, <laughs> the installation, and wow. everything that comes with it. For example, they have anti-climbing panels that go on it so that people won't climb up climb it. it. Uh, you know, and, and so those things are there, and students are going to help a little bit with the assembly mm -hmm. of some of the smaller antenna that goes along with it. So it's pretty impressive that you know behind the scenes you won't see a dollar amount there, but they were the ones that went out. and I, I think I counted, they basically went out besides their own radio club to about 13 other what I would call uh, businesses, organizations, and then they had numerous private donors that went with that. So it's just an unusual item, but uh, wow. it's uh, going to be at Midland High School. And it says here that the, sounds like the amateur radio club, the Midland High one, now the student version, uh, meets on Wednesdays. It's kind of a nighttime activity, and, and they work out of a room there. So that was kind of an interesting one. Um, the, for action, though, uh, we need some action on the last two. Um, we are giving gifts that down there a uh, total uh, 185,000. We have um, from the Gerstacker Foundation a uh, donation or a, a gift of the amount of 180,000. It's for the International Baccalaureate Premier Program, and it's the first of the two-year commitment that we have with them on helping us get that started. So there'll be another one following in a year. And also the Dow High Music Parents, uh, again, gave money to the orchestra for equipment and supplies in the amount of uh, 5000 and, and those two would require action on the part of the board. Thank you, Robert. First, thanks to all the donors. I'll get that out there right away. And then second, we'll move into the action item of accepting the, the gifts from the, the Gerstecker Foundation and the Music Parents at Dow. Um, can I entertain a motion? For seven three. I'll move to accept the gifts from the Gerstacker Foundation and the H.H. Uh, Dow High School Music Parents. Support. Uh, moved by Member McFarland, support by Treasurer Branstad. Any question or comment? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll say this again. I say it every time I look at this part of our meeting. It's just, it's amazing the generosity of our community towards the, towards the schools. It's just really incredible, and it, it's so great to, to see this. Almost every time we sit down for a meeting, it, it really is is mind-blowing how generous our community really is yeah I, I agree with Angela <laughs> and, and obviously Scott uh, uh, there's not, there are not <laughs> enough words this is uh, uh, between helping us start up IB programs to the radio club doing things to the OTS helping the debate program at Dow High it, it just really uh, these things have more measurable impact than you would know because they allow us to keep doing certain things 
by doing it. So again, thank you to everybody in the community, especially on this list tonight. With that, we'll move on to human resources. Oh, oh, oh. oh, I'm sorry, I didn't vote. Oh, all in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. If I had any nays, we'd had a discussion after the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on to uh, human resources. We have, uh, who's, do, is this, I, is I'm this going to pinch hit today. Okay. <laughs> so we have uh, one memorial to mention today, and the board and staff extend their deepest sympathy to the family of Robert E. Campbell, who passed away on September 25th, 2013. Mr. Campbell began his employment with Midland Public Schools in 1950. He spent most of his Midland Public School career at Central Intermediate School teaching history and English. He retired after 32 years of service with MPS in 1982. So, thank you. Quite a career for him, and it looks like he lived a good long life as well. So, and then we have one resing, or excuse me, retirement, Joanne Varner, Administrative Assistant Payroll. Okay. Thank you. Uh, you'll see listed in the agenda correspondence to and from the board and our regular scheduled activities. Um, you will notice they're all our regular um, uh, scheduled meetings. However, in January, we'll have our organizational meeting of the Board of Education as we are now shifted, I guess this will be the second year, into a January organization meeting versus our traditional July organization meeting. It used to be aligned with the school year. The start of school year with election law change to November's, we now have new board members potentially on November's, so we've gone to a January organization meeting. Um, that's it for the, the agenda. I now turn it over to board members for comment. Um, I'll cut Pam some slack and let her go last. And we'll start on my left with Scott. Uh, you know what, I'll pass. I, I think I've commented enough tonight and uh, that's all I've got to say about that. Welcome, Pam. Thank Great you. Great to have you on the board. I, as I told you earlier, I already had someone say to me, you guys did really good. <laughs> 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 and um, also loved the speech from Dow High. My son actually has Mrs. DeBoer right now, and he just comments how what they learn in those classes you can so apply to real life and um, how great that is that they have the opportunity to take these kind of classes. These are electives that you know we're very fortunate to be able to offer in the district. And um, it's just, this was another example. It was wonderful to see. Okay, great. Um, two weekends ago, um, I went to the Dow Chemical Science and Engineering Festival out at uh, Delta College, and uh, I took my kids out there. There's a lot of interactive uh, exhibits out there, really excited kids about uh, some of the STEM themes that are out there. And uh, Michigan Tech had a group called the Mine Trekkers there that they brought down a big tractor trailer van and it was so professional and so well done with everything from alternative energy and vehicles to um, you had the robotics team, you had the elementary and middle school Lego robotics team, and then you had uh, one of the local high school robotics team. It was really exciting. I think it got a lot of kids excited and uh, it was really neat to see that, uh, that interest in, uh, in science and engineering. Um, just in general, there's some healthcare exhibits there that was really interesting. Um, thank you to the Gerstackers um, that helping us out in expanding the IB program as part of the natural evolution of what uh, Midland Public School is, is going with the IB program. Uh, it's very much appreciated uh, once again. Uh, welcome, Pam. Uh, out of all your accomplishments and the things that you've done, I was, was very impressed. And uh, it's nice to add board member to that list of things that you can uh, serve up. Yes, it's really great to have you on board. Thank you. I'm looking you'll forward have, to it. You'll have plenty of challenges ahead, and uh, <laughs> you'll find these meetings can, uh, can be quite intense but rewarding also as well. Um, really was interested uh, with the progress East Lawn Elementary has made with their uh, uh, community school model. It's really, they deserve uh, a lot of recognition for that teamwork. Uh, uh, Judge Doreen Allen, uh, the schools, counselors, there's so many uh, community players in that and helping to the, the effort of getting kids uh, in school and we know that school attendance and engagement in school and being there really drives a lot of the performance and the, uh, the, the uh, academic achievement. Um, can I say something about our shirts just in closing? Absolutely. Um, I, I think it's great that the board did this and having the shirts in support of uh, a particular campaign uh, for breast cancer. Um, but it also helped me think about, because I have at least um, a few, I have at least three people that I follow that are parents that were volunteers for MPS. 
uh, students of MPS, staff that I read their blogs as they go on with their, uh, with their health issues that are quite uh, lengthy and quite courageous. Um, it's just great to see the support from the board, um, not just for a particular individual, I don't want to mention names and, and uh, uh, things along those lines, but just all of our, all of our staff, uh, parents and students that have some struggle in some sort, we always think of them as, uh, as they struggle to uh, come to class, to teach, to work, uh, to volunteer in the community, it's really impressive. It's just great we're doing this. Thank you. All right. <coughs> well, I'll start with welcoming Pam as well. I feel like we're a little bit of kindred spirits, as I told her, um, with, with, with our larger uh, families and children that have graduated and still having younger ones behind. We, we uh, bring a variety of experiences, and uh, Pam will bring a, a lot of great experiences and information, and with her background, um, Welcome aboard. Thank Glad you. to have you. And uh, along the uh, the pink shirts uh, line, I know that Dow High recently had their Volley for a Cure, and uh, they do that every year to raise money for the breast cancer awareness in October. And, and along with so many of the other um, generous donate donors we have to MPS, that, that is greatly appreciated. And Dow High also had an article in the paper, and this is another wonderful project, their Wounded Warrior Project. And I saw the headline, it said $10,000 over the last four seasons. And that's pretty incredible when I think a high school and students and the football team spearheading something like that. So thank you to them as well. Uh, John mentioned the uh, conference he was at. And I attended the STEM conference at Saginaw Valley a week ago and heard Governor, Governor Snyder speak as well as some other very, very uh, wonderful speakers from uh, universities and CEOs. I see Don in the audience over there. Thank you for that conference. It was a, it was a well attended. It was a wealth of information. And I think a lot of people went away energized. As, as Governor Snyder said, he didn't want it just to be a good conference, go away feeling good. It was fine. Let's be energized and do something. So I look forward to seeing what changes occur in education. It's uh, a lot out there, a lot of changes, but people were excited and inspired. Um, let's see. Congratulations to Midland High's Almost May. Their, their uh, play last week was great, something a little different. And Dow High's equestrian team, I know I just pulled that out of the paper. There was lots going on. They just competed, so I didn't hear how they did. And lastly, the band showcase is uh, Wednesday. So you, if the weather hopefully holds, I saw Mr. Monroe, and his prediction isn't very very good, but it uh, seems like it is every year. <laughs> but uh, what an, a great evening if you have the opportunity to go here. I don't know, is it 12, 15 bands from, from the areas? So on that note, I'll pass it on to Pam. Great, thank you. Well, I really believe that um, Education of the kids is, is our hugest investment in Midland. And to see the investment in the community that people are so generous with not only their funds as well as um, teachers with their programming, bringing new great ideas uh, to the classroom, it's, it's exciting. It's really exciting. And I think the kids see that and they respond. And you can see that in kids giving back at basketball games, not trying to raise money for them, for uniforms, or, or for their own benefit, but to give back to another cause. So it really makes me feel good about a community that, that is growing kids that are caring and really reach out to others. And it comes to me again, welcome. Um, I'd like to comment also on the the, the MyTech sponsored event out at SVSU on STEM education. Uh, uh, for those that didn't see the news broadcast that night, there's thousands of people, they're leaders in our community, educators in our community got to see that. And uh, obviously being a STEM person myself, uh, as my comment to one of our students tonight was, uh, it, was very, it was very good to see the very high level support in our state for enhancing that aspect of education. And uh, so that was good. I uh, also like to congratulate some Midland High students, speaking of STEM, Midland High students and uh, computer science teacher 
for their recognition from the state of Michigan. Mm -hmm. uh, second place in a contest sponsored by the government for mobile applications, uh, development of a mobile applications that would assist people in understanding different aspects of state government. And they created a venue they wanted to do and they were rewarded. Second place, $7,500. And I'd like to publicly recognize Richard Dockich, Thor Russell, and Aaron Green, and their teacher, Robert Fox. That's quite an accomplishment uh, to develop a, a mobile app uh, that works, that has a state application. It's pretty, pretty fascinating. So congratulations to them. Well, this I'll turn it over to Mike. I think you stole most of my Oh, rats. <laughs> um, Lynn, Jerry, and I attended the Women of uh, League of Women Voters uh, ah. last week as well. And so that was a very nice event to go to and a nice small setting of about 35, 40 people. And so it went quite well. And good to get our NPS message out to another group of people. Um, we mentioned enrollment earlier. So that was one of the ones I was going to talk about, about initial data. It, it, looks like our enrollment is down from where you budgeted it last spring and so uh, the Ministry of Staff is going to be begin to reviewing uh, some potential areas where we could probably try to um, make that hit a little less of a hit as we go forward so well, hopefully we can do that. I also wrote to you to let you know that Lapeer High School is joining our athletic league and so I know our athletic directors were very excited about that and they believe Lapeer is an outstanding fit for the Saginaw Valley League. And, and Mike, it might be appropriate to comment at this point that that's because the Lapeer East and West have consolidated. And it's just showing the overall trend in the state of Michigan of fewer students. Yep. So the two, the two high schools next year will be one at, under Lapeer High School. And so you're seeing some of that occur as we go forward. So We just already spoke about the enhancement millage and that coming forward as a renewal. So I'll mention that one more time that that is a renewal and we need that to be renewed in February. and. We'll begin to educate the public over the next few months. Once you take that action in October, we don't want to jump ahead too far ahead of that piece of it. I also uh, wrote to you about Carolyn Weirda from Saginaw Valley State University. Carolyn actually contacted me first, and we began to talk about something Jerry and I have been talking about for a while, and, and that is um, foreign students potentially coming to Midland. And um, there's a couple pieces there. It adds a lot of culture for our students and opportunities for those pieces. And when we were just talking about enrollment being down, it potentially can also add enrollment if we continue to offer the programming that we presently have. So it could be a win-win on both sides. Not sure where that conversation is going to go. Um, Karen spoke of bringing the leaders of that school from China over to speak to me potentially in November. So we'll see where that goes from there. But it could be a great opportunity. And the other one I want to recognize just Chestnut Hill one more time. And remember that reward school status, there's three ways to get it. But I think the one that's most prestigious is when you perform in the top 5% of the state. And so they were a top 5%, not just elementary school, it's top 5% of all schools, middle school, elementary, high schools, private, charter, public. And so one outstanding job at Chestnut Hill. Hill. Um, ironically, so you understand the, the dynamic working there is um, that they were a focus school the year before. And so you can see there's um, a lot of pieces being measured in there. Top 95% the year before they had a gap issue. And so um, you can't be a reward if you still have that gap. So it's something to look at it when you're looking at all of our schools that are getting different labels put on them as they go forward. That's it for me. Thank you. Any other comments for the go to the order? If not, we stand adjourned.